Um, yeah, my name is Garth Mullins, and I'm the host and executive producer of a podcast called Crackdown. Uh, we cover the drug war as drug users. Um, I've been on opioids my whole adult life, um, heroin for a lot of it, and methadone more recently, although not strictly that. And um, probably half the people I came up with are gone now from two overdose crises. So there was one in the 90s that Am talked about just off the top, you know, uh, publicly declared health emergency in the 90s that was uh, from strong heroin, but also from the spread of uh, AIDS uh, amongst drug users and uh, other and everybody. Um, but Vancouver was uh, had the highest rates in the industrialized world back in the day. So we had a dual public health emergency of a virus and an unregulated drug supply. And if that sounds familiar and weird, we're having a dual crisis again. And it's, it's incredible to think that I am living through a second one. Uh, and as the pandemic got going, we're really able to see what a public health response actually looks like. So I've I've dreamed of this. You know, I thought when you declare an emergency, when a government declares an emergency, that means it gets to do extra things. It gets to take extra measures. It can even, um, you know, uh, abrogate people's rights in, in, in a case of an emergency. But uh, not for us. Um, there was no uh, great sense of urgency for drug users. But when uh, COVID came, you know, they shut the borders, they closed the economy, they spent loads of money, the deficit no longer mattered. You didn't hear people talking about budgets. Um, we never had a moment like that with the overdose crisis. And in BC, so many thousands more people have died from overdose than from COVID. Uh, and I think those big drastic measures for COVID-19 are, are well warranted. You know, I, I think that we should have uh, officials that are looking out for uh, the public health. Um, but seeing these two things happen at the same time uh, was really disconcerting to us because we realized if the government wanted to, they could really um, take measures. And for us, for drug users, they don't have to shut down the border and shut down the economy. Uh, they can make it pretty simple. And so we've been saying this for some time, that it's uh, unequal treatment because the wrong people are dying. And it turns out that Horrigan, uh, the premier of British Columbia, John Horrigan, uh, knows exactly what we're talking about because last Thursday – he said this, and I'll just, I'll just give you a full quote because I know um, that, that only bits of it were said. So Horgan was asked about the difference between our government response to the pandemic and to uh, the overdose crisis. And he said, I just think these, two are, these are two separate things. We have an insidious virus that affects anyone at any time. And on the other hand, he says, and we have an opioid crisis that involves people using drugs. Those are choices initially, and they become dependencies. Wash your hands, physical distancing, wear a mask if you can do that. These are conscious decisions that people can make to protect themselves. But when you're addicted to opioids, you're not making conscious decisions other than getting your next opioid. And those are the issues that we need to intervene in. So the premier, uh, NDP premier was talking exactly like Stephen Harper used to talk. Same ideas in his head as Jason Kenney. Of course, he's apologized since then. But, uh, you know, you get these rare moments where you hear a politician speak truth, and that was it. He, that's what he thinks. And, uh, you know, I haven't heard him actually speak about the opioid crisis uh, before then since uh, the election campaign. So the, the premier doesn't really care. And Dean Wilson, who's been a longtime uh, harm reduction activist, told me in 2017, he said, uh, Garth, the NDP never did fuck all for drug users. And uh, I, I always vote NDP. I vote left. I'm a socialist. Um, and I have to admit, he's, he's right. And I'm not saying that um, the BC Liberals would do any better. They would be worse. But um, for me, this is meant I got to light a fire. You know, sparks fly out of Horgan's mouth. I got to pour gasoline around. That's the job of a drug user activist. Because the things we really need, safe supply and decriminalization, don't come from people who hold those ideas in their head. Uh, they don't come from leaders who are stuck in the Harper mentality about this sort of stuff, who are doing a moral calculus on who's a deserving person and who's a non-deserving person. So to stop the overdose crisis, um, we need a safe supply. And that means if people are doing 
uh, fentanyl or heroin or rock. There is a pharmaceutical version of all of those things. It is of a known purity, uh, known ingredients, uh, created under sterile conditions, and that's what people need to be able to access. Um, right, right now, we've made incremental steps with BC and prying a few other kinds of pills, which are distant cousins of, of heroin or opioids uh, from, from the rules. But um, those things that, that are sort of the direct, um, the direct pharmaceutical versions of the things people do right now, the things that are killing people because they're contaminated, those are not available to us. And um, this answer has been known for a very long time. In fact, I remember in the 90s when the idea of a safe injection site first came up. And this is um, a fight that was going on for a long time before Insight opened. In fact, activists uh, who eventually formed the Vancouver Area Network to Drug Users opened safe injection sites illegally without permission first. And that's how come we have Insight and other safe injection sites. People always have to take the civil disobedience, the, the rule-breaking approach to get a government embarrassed enough to allow the actual thing. But in the original vision of that, it wasn't just that you come in and you would get a, 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 new, you know, a new syringe and um, a clean place to, to, to do your hit. You'd also get uh, clean and safe drugs. We, we thought heroin prescribing could happen at these places. And that vision is more than 20 years old, I guess 25 years old perhaps. And so it's a good reminder that <clears throat> activists have to keep articulating the vision in front of the, uh, you know, the officials. And <clears throat> you know, if we'd been able to do that, we wouldn't be here today. Uh, so that, that demand uh, continues and we continue to struggle and push for it. Ultimately though, uh, a regime where drugs are legalized is, is what we need. I think we learned just about everything we need to know from, from alcohol prohibition about how this works out. And so really is, in my mind, is just how many more thousands of people have to die before we arm twist the government into allowing this to happen. Um, uh, thanks for inviting me, Am and uh, SFU organizers, and uh, cheers.